Of course, in the first hour, what we always do on a Saturday morning is have a look at the newspapers, invite a couple of people into the studio uh, to uh, to have a, a, a browse through the Saturday morning newspapers and uh, tell us, you know, about some of the stories that they found. Now, I do, I have to say, I have to admit, I, I do say to them, one of the, 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 the things I, I suggest is that they don't do anything hugely serious and definitely no politics is what I'm concerned on a Saturday morning. Uh, so let's find out who our guests are. Today, shall we start off with the lady in red this morning? Good morning, RuPaul. It is Robia <laughs> It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no stranger to BBC Radio Leicester or the uh, paper review. Just tell us very briefly about you. Um, so I trained as a pharmacist. I'm currently doing a PhD in something completely unrelated to pharmacy, um, gender equality and Islam, um, which is quite exciting. But um, I'm, I'm due to submit a 10,000 word piece in the next couple of weeks. So that's not so so exciting. Um, I'm, I'm a trustee of a charity called New Horizons in British Islam, which looks at um, Muslim identity and all sorts of interesting conversations around that. Okay, and and the other paper reviewer this morning hasn't been here before, not with me anyway. No. Brand new to uh, Saturday mornings, Matthew Hulbert. Uh, Matthew, tell us a little bit about you. Well, first of all, it's fabulous to be here. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, I chair the LGBT Centre in Leicester, so... Um people who involved with charities will know that um, how they're governed is by a set of volunteers who um, hopefully know a bit about the subject and who... Um, Govern the charity, so I've been the chair of the Leicester LGBT Centre for about two years now. A challenging but exciting role is what I can say um, about that, but very passionate about LGBT rights as an out and proud gay man um, and um, resident of, of Leicestershire for many, many years, former councillor in Hinkley and Bosworth, although as you say, we're not doing any politics this morning, but um, fingers in a few pies is what I can say. Okay. Really <laughs> I'm going to find out what those pies... I'm eating a few pies too, as self-evident. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to find out about some of those other pies though I'm sure before uh, too long uh, so give me a rough idea of some of the stories that we're going to be looking at this morning Rabia should we start off with you oh uh, so come across this really interesting one about girls gripped by prom mania um, blowing away thousands of pounds on um, what's what's been described as mini weddings and having two daughters that have already been through this process I can completely relate to, to that so um, we're going to look at that very shortly yeah. Uh, some of the other things that we're going to look at. Uh, Matthew, what have you got so for also, us? So, so it's things? Pride, London Pride today. Leicester's one is end of August, but it's uh, Pride in London today. But are some prides becoming too commercialised? Is there too much of an aim to try and get that pink pound rather than remembering what Pride is really all about? Uh, and one of the things that I want to talk about is talent when it comes to, to sport and particularly one young lady mm. who has made massive news this week. Uh, she is a star that has been born uh, this week yes. and she is phenomenal uh, and I'm keeping everything crossed that she goes you know um, very far very quickly because I think she's an inspiration to us all so all that coming up for you in the first hour of the programme it's quarter past nine in the studio with me looking at the newspapers, uh, Matthew Holbert and uh, Rabia Hanan. So, uh, Matthew, shall we start off with a story from you? Great. So this is from the Guardian Today headline, Pride in London fends off claims of pink washing. So um, this is um, about the idea, um, and it's something that, you know, I know people say about... Um, other prides as well uh, across the country although to be fair I don't think Leicester pride which um, I'm not just saying that because you know I'm from Leicester and uh, you know if I felt Leicester was included in this I'd say it but I don't think it is that there's too much of a focus on the commercialization of pride um, and actually wanting the pink pound as it's called and actually forgetting that that pride should be about a number of things. It should be about having a great time. Yeah, that's absolutely important. But it also should be about a peaceful protest for the equalities that we still mm -hmm. haven't got. Mm -hmm. And yes, we've come a long way. Yes, we've got um, uh, same-sex marriage and, mm -hmm. and other things. But actually, if you're a non-binary person, if you're, a, if you're a trans person at the moment, you can face daily hostility and you aren't really equal yet. And so actually having pride as a very public way, a very public show of we are here, get used to it, is important. And it just being it just being a party or it just being about how much money can we make from these people um, really misses the point as far as I'm concerned. Now, thankfully, in, in, in Leicester, and ours is coming up on, on August 31st, you know, it hasn't got down, gone down that road. We have we have a great day, um, 
and you can pretty much enjoy it without having to spend a lot of money, which I think is important. Um, but also, um, you know, Lester Pride recognises that there is that element of protest and saying, raising that um, rainbow banner high and saying we've still not quite got the equality that we that we should have. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I, th I think I'm incredibly excited. I've written that date down, August the 31st. Didn't realise we had one in Leicester, so that that, that that's really good. And and as you say, I mean, I, I saw a clip, I think, um, just a few months back, where someone was trying to get into Pride and mm. they were being prevented because they hadn't purchased mm. a ticket or mm. something. And yep. I thought that was quite Absolutely. bizarre because I just thought that the whole thing was open and the, the, the idea was to enable ordinary members of the public to be able to sort of interface with it and understand, actually, yep. there is this fight for equality that goes on that people haven't really acknowledged yet and recognised and, and I think as, as you say the, the more commercialised it becomes the less access the people that really need to hear this message have mm. to it so mm. I think that's a really important point. But isn't that the case with, with most things mm. that start off as a you know as, as a, you know um, uh, um, a, there's got to be a reason for it, you know, there's a, a protest or whatever it might be. Yeah. Do, don't they all turn out to be sort of commercial in the end? I mean, you, you look at all the other festivals that we have, you look at even things like Christmas, mm. everything nowadays, there, there is a commercial value to it. There is, and but it's one of those things that, you know, so, so I can tell you that... Uh, you know, I, I work, but I'm on a fairly ordinary um, salary. You know, not all LGBT plus people um, are, are well off. And there's this idea that, oh, because... Um, and also, this is this is a misnomer anyway, but the, the the theory has been for many years, well, because, you know, you don't have children, do you? Therefore, so you've got lots of excess cash. Well, number one, we absolutely can uh, have uh, children, um, same-sex couples. Um, there's absolutely ways to do that. But, but also, you know many of us are not well off actually mm. um and something like pride surely must be about you know from the poorest to the richest mm. and everyone in between being able to go along mm. um and you know certainly if the, if there was ever you know a, any move to to make Leicester's a much more commercial thing i i'd be Mm. against that mm. it's just it's just being very conscious of it isn't it i mean we talked about commercialization before in regards to christmas yeah. and 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 the very idea that you know whenever anything is successful people will come in and try and make a bit exactly. of money out of it um but for us there's a responsibility to remember well what is the key purpose behind all of these events and make sure that remains at the forefront of people's minds and and that's not forgotten about it doesn't just become a little party but C can i ask yeah. you um uh, do you know if it's the same in regards to so in so in leicester we have many different festivals we have pride we have a number of religious festivals mm. in in the city uh, is the same true do you know of of um, religious based I events in the city that there might be an idea that they become commercialized or is that just not would well that i've, not I've be... definitely noticed it with Eid. i mean really? you could go to mm. your local supermarket and see all sorts of you know banners and, and and in some ways actually as a parent it can be a relief you know when you haven't done any Eid shopping and at the last minute you can just sort of go to your local groceries uh, um, supermarket and just sort of pick up decorations or little, you know, little presents that you can sort of put in like stocking type things. But is there a pressure? So that but there is. I think yeah. there is an increasing pressure. There's, there's no doubt about it because, you know, you do it one year, it ups the game for the next year. Mm. This whole idea of, you know, giving presents and the presents have become more, you know, bigger and more yeah. glamorous each mm. time. Yeah, no, definitely. You can't, you can't escape that. And very think. much the same for, you know, things like Diwali. When we celebrate Diwali, I mean, you, you, you look at Belgrave Road. I mean, it's all about sort of selling products, yeah. isn't it, during the festival. The roads food. are closed. It's, it's about food, mm. but selling products, you know, because you, you're going to buy gold and, and all oh. sorts of other things. So the, the yeah. pressure is definitely on yeah. um, and we put it on ourselves yeah, a lot as well don't we, we? Do. we can, can all... I just say in, in defence of, of Pride in London <laughs> that they would say that it costs a lot yeah. yes. to put on in terms yes. of road closures so it's not made easy uh, for them and as someone who runs a, a, a local village carnival I know that yeah. you know how difficult it can be to, to, to but put I suppose it's about how you like how on. you you know, sort of pull that money back, really. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I, I think free It needs to be to inclusive, needs to be, yeah, abs not abs exclusive. Absolutely. And we're talking about, you know, it, it's London as well. You know, you, you're going to have thousands and mm. what well, thousands of visitors, mm. you know, tens you know to the capital, to tens of thousands yeah. to the capital. And so there's got to be an element of both, I think. I don't know. But they'll have an amazing day today. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah. they will. At 9.21 here on BBC Radio. Yeah. It's me, Rupal Rajani, in the meantime, with you through till one o'clock this Saturday morning and into the afternoon. And in the studio with me, Rabia Hanan and uh, Matthew Hall. But, um, uh, Rabia, you've got a story for us. 
Um, oh, no, you know, no, we're not going to do the story. <laughs> I've just remembered. We're not going to do the story. We, you've got your own story to tell. Oh, I've just remembered. Go on. Oh, I'm still just a bit scared. Casually, so exciting. casually, Matthew, she said, oh, <laughs> by the way, I've, I've got this come, thing. Come point out before she says it, I'm well gel about this. <laughs> well gel. Yeah, you're not the only one. I really am. <laughs> come on. Um, so I've been asked to do one of these TEDx talks. In September, oh, I know I, I'm sort of almost afraid to say it because it's terrifying to, to even think of because of the sort of reaction that I'm getting here <laughs> because be so there's awesome, so much expectation. Though. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I, that. Yeah, that's. So the is hope. this the TEDx Leicester? Because there's this is yeah. yeah. So, so, but it all feeds into you know the sort of international platform of TEDx talks that go online on YouTube and. Yeah, so I'm assuming that everybody knows what TEDx is. Uh, they or must TED, have seen the videos. TED, on TED YouTube. videos. I mean, just explain, uh, Matthew, what, so they're, what they're, TED, TED talks are about. They're 15 to 20 minutes. Yep. Um, speeches, in, in, in effect, um, but where an idea is, is proposed. And they expanded on a, a fair bit of length because, yeah. you know, someone talking for 15, 20 minutes is, is, is not to make you even more, you know, nervous <laughs> or worried. But can I just say, oh, my goodness, I, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, got, I've got two dreams. Well, as I said to you earlier, apart from, you know, meeting a husband, but we'll leave my, fa- <laughs> we'll, we'll leave my failed love life at the door, I think, uh, for the moment. We can talk about that um, as well, well if we you want in the future. You know, um, have some blind date or something. But no, my two other dreams are going to number 10 Downing Street. I know. What can I tell you? <laughs> or and doing a TED Talk. So I'm, I'm so jealous. Really TED Talks, I mean, they're, they're kind of inspirational, aren't they? Yeah. Quite yeah, more, well, more often you're than just, not. You know, adding to the pressure here, RuPaul. So, you've been on, so what's the topic? So the, the topic, the theme this year is fast forward. So it's looking at the sort of rapidly evolving, you know, social, sort of driven world of sort of social innovation and technology. Um, and it's about sort of embracing the future, sort of getting confident with it and, um, and exploring and examining, you know, what that means for different people. So I have to pick my own topic, uh, you know, amidst all of that, which I've got ideas about. Um, it's going to be on the 7th September and there's You're tickets going to available. Us, aren't you? Me and well, well yeah. I don't yeah. have any free tickets but I do have some <laughs> tickets that are subsidised actually for well, certain, certain good friends so <laughs> but but you know tickets are available um, and um, they're only sort of £15 a pot so it's not really and, and you get the, the opportunity to sort of be there for the whole day and listen to all and these inspirational of, yeah, yeah. yeah ins- inspirational people that talk about their ideas of how they're going to change the world and all of these oh it's, a, it's an extremely oh, you're going to be exciting brilliant. time you're ab- oh, you're gonna, I don't you know will just, I just need your really positive thoughts and vibes for at, at the moment I'm, it's, absolutely it's really, I was fine about it until my 14 year old sort of jaw dropped at the and, and said oh my goodness this is amazing yeah, it's this very is, cool and then it's it? just it, yeah it's well I didn't realize it was so t- t- yeah talks. I didn't realize yeah. he would even know about it so it's fine when no one really knows and it's sort of below the radar but when it gets yeah attention is that, is that one of the I mean have you, did you ever think that would happen you know a TEDx talk or no a but talk? the thing is when I was asked I just thought it was just a, a talk you know just a little mm. presentation I've done little presentations mm. it was all right it was literally my 14 year old's response to the fact that my goodness this is a TEDx talk, which made it really dawn on me that actually, oh my goodness, this is quite you heard, potentially quite big. You heard Matthew say that uh, that he's got you know things that he'd like to do. Yeah. So te- do, do a TED oh, talk okay. being one yeah. of them. The other, uh, go to Downing Street, Downing Street, Street. Downing Street. Okay, and, well, and meeting the husband. So so maybe I can somehow do kind of all three in a, <laughs> the, the space of a weekend or meet something. Meet the husband at Downing meet Street. Meet the husband maybe. at Downing Street. <laughs> Anything's possible, Matthew. Well, it's doing one a TED of, talk. One of, the, one of the civil servants that'd do me. That'd be fine. Yeah. So. But, but maybe you've got a dream uh if you're listening to the program right now you've got a dream of wanting to do something maybe you've managed to fulfill that um wouldn't that be great if you have why don't you tell me about it this morning tell us about it here in the studio because then we can all be in envy of you you know tell me what it was that you managed to fulfill that dream that you wanted uh, and you managed to fulfil it, what was it? Give me a call, 0808 100 1049, that telephone number. Or if you prefer, you can text me, um, 81333. Make sure you start that uh, text message with the word less and please put your name on it. Or maybe you've got a dream and you're working at it. it hasn't come true just yet, but you're working on it. What is it? What is that thing that you would quite like to achieve uh, and, and you're working towards it? 
Call me, text me, or why don't you tweet me? It's at Rupal R or at BBC Less. Anyway, in the studio with me this morning, uh, Matthew Albert and uh, Rabia Hanan looking at the uh, papers. Um, we were just talking about, you know, things you want to achieve or, you know, uh, Matthew saying one of the things you'd like to do is, is meet a man, yes. uh, meet a partner and uh, go to <laughs> Downing. so desperate. No. <laughs> Downing's a husband. Uh, yeah, that's, that's well, yeah, serious. Not just really husband, husband yeah. material, <laughs> absolutely. Husband material. Uh, Downing Street, and what was the third one? The TED Talk. Oh, the TED Talk, and then Rabia, you know, just happened so to I'm drop just so in. So I'm so She's going to be doing a TED Talk, um, or has been invited to do a TED Talk, and I've been asking you, listening to the programme this morning, about things that you would like to achieve, or you have managed to achieve. You know, those things that you really, really want to do, and you think, I'm going to do it, I am going to do it. Maybe you're working towards it. Feel free to get in touch with me, because I'd love to know what, what kind of um, dreams you have, what ambitions you might have, and whether you've achieved them or not. Um, 81333 if you're texting me this morning start your message with the word Leicester or give me a call the number is 0808 100 1049 and it's absolutely free if you call me won't cost you a penny Stuart in New Parks thanks very much indeed for getting in touch you say I have achieved my ambition 36 years ago by completing all 92 uh, football league grounds apparently this is a big thing you see uh, people go from ground to ground trying to get, mm -hmm. you know, and visit all the grounds. Well done, Stuart. You managed to do that, he says. Mm -hmm. I what don't do football. No. Do you, <laughs> no, I'm no. Not big on sport. But that sounds that impressive, sounds though. Amazing. How can you not be into all oh, talking of sport? We've got, we've yeah. got to talk about this a bit later. Anyway, look, let's move on, yeah. Rabia. Let's talk about the story well, that you've got. It's really an extension of the whole sort of commercialisation type process, and it was looking at the idea of the prom. So um, this particular newspaper article um, looks at a young girl who isn't just stressed about the end of year GCSE exam but she's actually been meticulously researching and planning um, what to wear for the prom and um, how this sort of whole sort of industry has become such that people are spending on average a thousand pounds that's insane that pretty that scary. Is, that is mad, 16 year olds spending up to a thousand pounds on hair makeup dress and transport to the event so there's this whole idea of people now you know coming in limousines yeah, the big limos, or, yeah. but helicopters Two thousand pounds a pop for a helicopter ride. I mean, this isn't their wedding day, you know. This, this but, is. But I think there's this whole idea of you know trying to um, show people that you fit in, which is really concerning, especially for sort of teenagers. There's this huge amount of pressure Absolutely. of look, I don't want to be the one that doesn't fit in. I need mm. to sort of you know fit the part um, and, and, and that's a really difficult you know sort of slippery slope I think it's very mm. difficult to sort of detach ourselves from um, I think there's also this idea of linking um, sort of you know money and looking good and fame with happiness mm. the, this idea that actually if I get to that place if I'm like that person that looks and behaves in a particular way I'll finally sort of be content internally but and um, there's the idea that they have someone to go with as well which is another added pressure isn't it to, yeah I mean I, th I mean the thing is it's quite exciting to have a prom at the end of yeah. the year I don't want to knock it completely you know having a party to sort of celebrate getting yeah, together with your friends yes. enjoying yourself a but, party is one thing though isn't it but yeah. these are it, uh, and it's a uh, um, a very American thing, isn't it? Now, that doesn't yeah. necessarily make it a bad thing, but it is a, it is a very American thing. But it has been led with respect to how, what it looks here. like and, yeah. yeah, yeah, the shoes that you have to buy, the jewellery that you have so to wear. So as a parent, makeup, is, this, is this something you've had to go through? Oh, yeah, so so my second child has just gone through that and, and there's no doubt about it. The peer pressure is there, which, you know, has a knock-on effect to the parents and all of the... I mean, I've got... You know, my daughter's got some wonderful friends, wonderful parents who I couldn't do with that because they've just sort of, you know, helped... You know, someone that's doing, you know, studying as well mm. as working as well as got other kids. It's been really difficult for me to sort of keep on top of everything. So if it wasn't for the other parents that are sort of very supportive and understanding about this, I wouldn't be able to do it at all. But and, and, and my middle niece, um, Charlotte, who um, lives out in, in Dubai with, you know, with my sister and the family, um, has just had uh, prom and um, uh, saw the photo of her and her just looking absolutely amazing, you know, and me yeah. just thinking, oh my goodness, how has she reached that age, you know? Yeah. Um, but but again, I think it's something that a little bit like with Pride that we were saying that, okay, if you've got a lot of money, but but if you've not, you mm. can't help but feel excluded. And, yeah. and I, I just think we have a real issue in our society that actually, don't want to get too serious, but actually poverty hasn't gone away. Mm. Uh, and... The, the more we make so many different things exclusive rather than inclusive, yeah. 
makes those folks who, whose lives are already tough enough yeah. um, feel that actually we're not really part of this society because we just can't afford to be. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. think the other layer is also that it's it's also about how good a person looks on the outside. Yeah. So you're not mm. looking at the yeah, sort of right. internal sort of you know integrity or character of a person, but it all becomes about the sort of superficial nature of what you know how, how good someone looks. Mm. And and I just think you know pushing our children to sort of aspire for those values rather than the sort of deeper rooted you know grounded values i think can be a little which bit has been the whole argument over love island as as, as, as well isn't it that <laughs> yeah. you know um i mean they all look very good and the guys look absolutely fantastic but really how how realistic is is having bodies like that mm -hmm. and the answer is probably not for most people and actually i think it can create insecurities you know now if you can just watch it and just see it as a piece of entertainment that's fine but actually if you can't it's a worry mm. and young people at this age particularly vulnerable and you know subject to sort of being influenced by these ideas mm. really can't we we could carry on this conversation <laughs> but we've, we've got lots of other stories to get through if you've got an opinion feel free to get in touch eight one triple three on the text that you text with the word leicester please uh lee says uh, one day i hope to be working full time for bbc radio leicester covering local stories who knows lee who knows <laughs> meantime in the studio with me my newspaper reviewers this morning Matthew Hilbert and uh, Rabi Hanan Matthew you've got um, a radio story for us haven't you well I think it was Rabi oh, both actually. of you but yes there's a time and discs and the wonderful Kirsty Young having to to sadly step down due to due to illness although I gather she is feeling much better yeah well but, it's a condition yeah. called fibromyalgia mm. isn't fibromyalgia it? Sort of yeah like, um you know it's a sort of chronic pain type mm. condition where you've got sort of pain all over your body and your joints and stiffness it's just really difficult to sort of get around and I think the easier you take it it's slightly easier mm -hmm. on, on the particular condition so um but she's certainly you know as, as you say stepping down because she feel it's all she feel it's all got a bit much for her health mm. um which is really sad actually she's such an incredible presenter Very impressive, and and, yeah. and just the empathy that she's always Very had relatable. with her yeah. her guests and her you know her apparent sort of understanding of who they were you were saying something about the sort of preparation that she sort of puts in beforehand it, it, yeah, yeah, apparently um you know my husband was listening to, to, to radio 4 last night and he said you know it's incredible the amount of work that she actually put in mm -hmm. to to make the guests feel comfortable she would mm -hmm. do as much research as you possibly as she possibly could and even dress accordingly uh, to, oh, wow. to put the to, to put people at at ease. at ease and oh, you know conversations so that she's had with with celebrities who mm. would um, open up to her like mm -hmm. they wouldn't open up to, yeah. to any and you can else. really tell when you hear these programs you can just you know you, it's like you're sitting in the living room with these people understanding their, their their life histories and understanding their journey it's just a really different way I think of but, but it's a great history. format though isn't it and and we were, we were just saying before you know I used to work in in radio and and you know I, I think once you've got the radio bug you, you never lose it I think it's the best medium that the media the form of media that there is because it's so personal and you can just be there with your headphones on and you know the presenter is talking just to you and I think um, we don't often have you know I know it's a bit of a cliche to sound we live in a soundbite world but we kind of do at the moment and our politics is full of soundbites and all the rest of it to, to have a, a, a lengthy period of time where you can have a genuine discussion with someone mm. and really find out what they're about we don't have much of that no. today, actually. Yeah. And you know, I'm not just saying that because I'm not just saying this because I'm here. But really, the BBC is one of the few places that does allow yeah, that, that, that space. sort of conversation. Yeah, well, everything's absolutely. so fast-paced now, isn't it? There's almost this urgency to sort of get onto the next thing before you finish the first. So to have that sort of um, room to breathe mm -hmm. and really hear someone's story, I think, it really does need to be valued. I mean, I don't think the programme itself is going. That's no, it. No, so no, that's sure. a relief. Someone will, so no, no. Someone, but but filling, you know, someone like Kirsty Young's shoes it was, is going to be quite some undertaking and, and actually um you know the uh, i'm sure there'll be lots and lots of meetings about it if the decision hasn't already been made because actually mm. you, you can get it wrong with radio when you move people mm. uh, ab about and 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 listeners are, are very loyal but they don't really like change very much and <laughs> you know you have to be very very careful um because sometimes, well, yeah. if listeners decided you've got it wrong, then you've got it wrong, and you, you know. <laughs> uh, well, abso absolutely, yeah. you, you've, you're absolutely spot on, and especially programs like that that yeah. are sort of you know um, so well established, yeah. so well known, so much you know so yeah. loved so much, to to get the wrong presenter mm. to to follow on from somebody like yeah. you know like that in in, in this case, Kirsty Young. 
is is a, is a difficult decision, and I wouldn't want to be that person to no. make that decision. I wouldn't. But you know, I am available if in case <laughs> well, in case they're listening. Yeah. In case they're listening, I am available. <laughs> yeah, can't quite see that happening, can you? <laughs> hey, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Never say never. No. <laughs> It's my greatest achievement. It was 2015, taking the controls of a light aircraft and having a flying experience in beautiful, clear skies over Cornwall. I plan to do a skydive for charity soon, as my pipe dream is uh, to do a mission survive with Bear Grylls. So realistically, my ambition is to take small steps to build my own adventures in the spirit of my hero, Bear. Thanks very much indeed, I'd Canada. love to have an adventure with Bear Grylls. <laughs> yeah. <I'm... laughs> Would you... Is it the same sort of adventure that... Oh, we'll leave Most of us, no, I think it's we should Saturday just... morning. Absolutely. Thanks yeah. very much. <laughs> <laughs> right, a couple of real quickies then from, from you both. Um, Matthew, should we go with your story about descaling kettles? I'm yes. mortified by this, so, if I'm honest. You, know, you have to descale <laughs> your kettle sometimes, but it's been suggested that Prosecco, and I love Prosecco, is only good for descaling your kettle. <gasps> <laughs> According to a top restaurateur, um, Russell Norman, founder of the award-winning, and I'm not going to be able to say it right, so I won't, but a set of restaurants, said, aside from mixing it in cocktails, I leave it to hen parties. I leave it to wearers of novelty T-shirts. I leave it to the terrifying hordes of daytime drinkers Ooh. who haven't been able to score a Prozac <laughs> prescription. Outrageous! <laughs> Outra- I can see um, yeah, lovers of Prosecco uh, up in arms about that. I love Prosecco. <laughs> yep. Other drinks are Do available. Yeah. Other, other, other. That's classic. <laughs> That's outrageous. A final one from you, Robbie. Um, yeah, come. something that I wish I'd have had when my children were a little bit um, younger. Um, Alexa for babies. This is basically the idea of a spot, smart speaker, um, which identifies the different types of cries a baby has. So when a baby needs his nappy changed or a baby needs her milk, whatever it is, you can distinguish that. Apparently, this Professor Lou has... Um, they, put, they put all of these different types of cries into a computer and they're able to sort of distinguish between the different So cries. what, Alexa, you know, the smart speaker's going to tell you... What... They're going to hear the cry yeah. and it will say, this is what needs to happen. All right, for your baby. That's amazing, isn't it? I think I need one of it's these. No, yeah, I, I'm anymore. just it's... scared of, of what. I mean, technology is <laughs> we great, but you know. Well, it is, but... <laughs> oh my goodness me! Look, Very thank exciting. you so much for for joining me on the program. Before you go, Matthew, I know you've got something coming up that yes. we can uh, give a mention. So tomorrow at, at the Leicester LGBT Centre on Wellington Street here in the city, our summer wellness fair from eleven till three, crafts. Um, so much to do, including a little speech from me at one o'clock, but that's the most boring part of the day. Um, but but lots to, to do. You don't have to be LGBT+. plus If you're an ally of ours, please come along 11 till 3 tomorrow. Excellent. Thank you so much, both of you. You go prepare for that TED Talk, man. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. it'd be amazing. And, and we'll be getting our invite, won't we? <laughs> Absolutely. We yeah, have to yeah. pay Just for it, Just lots of positive thoughts and vibes before then. No, so f- the she right says place. no freebies. Outrageous. <laughs> this is Earth, Wind and Fire. Up to your knees.